So just a reset, and we're going to talk about Iran more with Anna, but Donald Trump ripped up the Iran deal. Mike Pompeo and John Bolton have long sought a war with Iran. The administration in general has a uh, beyond cozy, almost joined at the body with relationship with Israel and Saudi Arabia and other extremist forces trying to provoke this. Um, and they've charged Iran with attacking oil tankers. They've never provided any evidence. They have sort of tried to sort of tell a big lie about Iran Al Qaeda links, even though to the extent that we do have declassified intelligence about Iran and Al Qaeda, it's basically mainly Al Qaeda figures sort of complaining about Iran and Iran, uh, basically allowing temporary status for some Al-Qaeda people, but not allowing them to communicate with other members of the group and thinking of their own strategic calculation of how to use Al-Qaeda, not to mention the fact that Iran is fighting Al-Qaeda adjacent groups every single day in Syria through its own proxies like Hezbollah. Donald Trump, apparently, he's saying publicly that his concern over 150 people is what led him to call off strikes at the last minute. Obviously, you know, one, I mean, of course, no one, I mean, look what he does to children in this country. Obviously, this is nobody who cares about human life. But I do think that this is an area where, objectively speaking, Donald Trump has, I don't know why, but he's got a fear or an anxiety or an instinct or some type of understanding that at maybe even just on a workload level, that this would require time and focus. This isn't threatening people on Twitter. This isn't, you know, doing your uh, Cagney impression, uh, you know, before you get on Air Force One. This is really serious and it absolutely will be catastrophic. And the real fanatics and the real nutcases with regards to these issues, the Pences, the Pompeos, the Boltons, they want it. They don't care. They are happy, obviously, to see plenty of innocent people die in Iran. They're happy to have poor and working class people be sent over there, be killed, have their limbs blown off. Um, they're still in the afterglow of the millions of lives that they helped loss, uh, lose in Iraq. And, you know, Greg Gutfeld, in addition to being very unfunny, is actually a good doorway into the mindset of right-wing, I wouldn't even say armchair warriors, I mean, less than armchair. Uh, you know, people like Marco Rubio, who are adults in positions of power, whose understanding of the most important matters of war and peace really do come down to like, bing, 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 bing. And, you know, telling like stories to themselves about aircraft carriers. And they think that the world is, I mean, we said that during the debates, during the Republican debates, that literally people like Rubio were just, fetishizing aircraft carriers. I mean, to the extent they could get into specifics of anything, it was talking about different weapon systems the way a seven-year-old would if they got to go on their first you know, naval ship on a tour. It's pathetic and dangerous, um, but also uh, pathetic and stupid. Here's Greg Gutfeld. This is now just a video game, and I think that's good news. We're, in ear we're now in a... I'm sorry, I have to Sam this. I feel like we should just replay it. This is now a video game, and that's good news. So the thousands of people that have died from drone attacks across the globe since Bush accelerating under Obama and accelerating under Trump, that's good news. This is now just a video game. And I think that's good news. We're, in an ear we're now in a time where it, it doesn't matter how large your population is because the population is no longer expendable in war. It's now about the machines that you have. Drones are now replacing bones, oh. Jesse. Yes, I like to do rhyming <laughs> there. Point. So it'll be stuff versus stuff. And fortunately for us, we have the best stuff. And if we have the stuff up there, it doesn't matter what they have down there. We control them if we have a sky of drones. So then how do you retaliate, right? How do you retaliate to something that isn't human? Like, we, 
you know, they took $160 million worth of, of machinery from us. We have to do that, which means either hitting uh, some parts of their navy or uh, refineries or whatever. You find that you retaliate yeah, with machines. But I think it's good news because I think we are moving away from hurling bodies at bodies. That's a good. That's can, I, got, can I disagree slightly? No, you can't. All right. I mean, look, he's obviously a very dumb guy. And even just the you know machines example, Donald Trump was able to understand that as an example, you hit an oil refinery you will kill human beings. Then that also begs a further question that if we were going to accept the demented logic of this, that security is guaranteed through a swarm of unmanned killing robots hovering over the Middle East, then why do you need to do anything? You're right, you know what? It, yeah, and, and by the way, it is true that fundamentally Iran poses absolutely no security risk to us in any conceivable remote manner. They have s never indicated that they have any desire to hit us in any way, shape, or form. Certainly Hezbollah does not. There's, uh, forget, that's us. With the Europeans, Iran has mostly normal uh, diplomatic relations with the, with the Europeans. The Europeans obviously see the United States as the belligerent aggressors in this situation. They have real security and real strategic differences with Israel and Saudi Arabia. Israel and Saudi Arabia pose both profound dangers to Iran, and those are the types of problems and challenges that in a sane diplomatic environment you'd be working out. So, but I, I, I mean, <laughs> in a sick way, he's basically saying once again, yes, Iran actually does pose no threat to us. And so that should be the upshot of all of this. Right. They pose absolutely no threat to us. Anybody that says they pose a threat to us is either a mental, you know, is deranged and having fever dreams is stupid or lying. And usually in most cases, all three. One of the reasons Guernica was so uh, uh, such an atrocity remembered uh, in the Spanish Civil War in the uh, 36 was because they attacked po uh, populations for the first time with uh, flying vehicles. So it's not like like uh, uh, Gutfeld saying it's no longer on the table. Like it could be very easily on the table again, and in m many parts of the world, it's still very much on the table. Like, Without a doubt. And also, look, I mean, look at Yemen. There's no right. question that in a place like Yemen or Pakistan, that you could absolutely correlate activity and interest in groups like Al Qaeda with the fact that for what you is a video game, for what them is their family members getting wiped out in a robot attack that we on the delivery end don't even know the people that we're killing. They could just be fitting a behavioral pro profile. And as Brent, that's so bad. And, and negative shout outs to all the war hawk liberals with their galaxy brain takes that they're tweeting at Trump that he's like a coward for not just lighting up 150 Iranian people. Like this one guy tweeted, you'll never be 1% of the man Obama was, which like, OK, I got to stick up for Obama for a second and remind everyone that he made the Iran nuclear deal. That's right. Um, but also, like, if Obama were to follow through and kill a bunch of people, like, that wouldn't make him good. Well, of course not. No, these the, the, the types of total, the, the absolute idiots on one end, an Adam Schiff who ran with Mike Pompeo's assertions about Iran without any proof, as well as, yeah, I mean, just the kind of garden variety morons that would tweet stuff at Trump. I mean, th these are, they are to say the very least, part of the problem. And, this and is that's just the liberal version of Gutfeld, which is that the rest of the world, including human beings, flesh and blood human beings, are all just a proxy for your own particular neuroses and fixations that you're working out on Twitter, including whatever the like fucking issues you have about your manhood, that somehow Obama and Trump is a dick measuring contest that can be manifested through killing Iranians and you know precipitating a catastrophic military engagement. Anybody who's doing that or bringing in the whole Russia piece uh, are stupid, are dangerous, are reckless, are immoral, and uh, should never be taken seriously on anything. Yeah, here's a good rule of thumb. Don't try to nag Trump into killing more people. Yeah, I would say that's 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 a pretty solid one. And if you recognize that Trump is a deranged, incompetent, racist, and so on, you know, probably a good idea to not encourage him to wage a war 
that could be the most dangerous thing to happen on the planet. And Just a thought. Not that this is about efficacy, but this is a common delusion in the war liker sort of genre, mm -hmm. which is like we can just do this with our air power, which is what we tried to do in Vietnam, which is it's also what the Nazis thought they could do to Britain. Right. We've got the V1 rocket now. Right. We have the best stuff. We have the best technology. Also, and fucking, I mean, excuse my language, but yes, we killed three million people in Vietnam. I mean... We did an, uh, an, a quantitative air war, which is a genocide, genocidal campaign that was also, by the way, precipitated by a lie about intelligence. Look up Gulf of Tonkin. All right.